So you guys ready to get into Word this morning? Yeah! Good. Well, there's a verse that caught me uh, this week, or actually two weeks ago, as I was reading in Galatians. We've been in the New Testament a lot in our daily Bible reading app. And um, uh, we all know this verse. You've heard it a thousand times. You've heard other sermons on this verse. But for some reason, this verse in 2020 stuck out to me. It's Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. I've memorized it and I've known it most from the New King James. It says, do not grow weary while you're doing good. For in a due season, you shall reap if you do not lose heart. So I, I, we often read out of the New Living. So here's the same verse in the New Living. Don't get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. Well, I want to reap a harvest of blessing. Great. Don't give up. You know, a farmer puts the seed in the ground. He's got to work the ground. He's got to pull the weeds. He's got to fertilize. He's got to put the, the, the seed in the ground. And then they have to water it and they have to protect it and they have to, 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 to fertilize it and, and pesticide it. And then there eventually will be a harvest. It doesn't happen overnight, but they can't grow weary in waiting. Like they can't just put the seed in the ground and then, you know, a couple of days later be like, well, Martha, nothing grew out the ground. I guess we'll just sell the farm and leave. Like, no, hang in there, little buddy. Like your harvest is coming. Just don't give up. And I think that so often Christians don't walk in blessing because they don't wait for the harvest because we give up. So the standard that the Lord gave to the Apostle Paul and that he gives to us today is do good and continue to do good. Once you're doing good, don't stop doing good. But here's the key. Don't stop doing good even when you're tired. Because sometimes we get tired and He's saying, even when you're tired, continue to do good. I think most people want to do good. I think most people wake up every day and they're like, I hope I do good today. Like nobody's like, hey, today's the day I hope I totally blow it. Like I hope I mess up big today. I wanna do something so bad at work, I get fired. Like I wanna fall off my diet today and fall off in a major way. I've been sober for all this time, but I hope I really blow it and get back on drugs or get back drinking again. Like maybe you're a young couple, like I'm, I'm glad we're dating, but I hope we blow it today and lose our virginity. Like, you know, like I hope I make a big mistake to, no. When we wake up, we're like, I, I wanna do well today. I wanna do good. And that's the standard that God has set. Once you're doing good, keep on doing good. Don't quit doing good and don't stop doing good even if you're tired. No matter what December of 2020 throws our way, we're going to do good and we're not going to give up. Amen? Amen. So the Apostle Paul's reminding us, he said, the number one reason we don't do well is when we get tired. We let our guard down. We struggle to do well when we're tired. And for 2020, it's been exhausting. Like we all came into 2020 back in January full of faith and God's going to do great things and I'm so excited. And then I saw this for pastors this week, a meme that was posted. And I'm like, I get this. This is, this is real life for me. Like, I feel like this is, we all were excited about January and now here we are going into December and we're like, I'm exhausted. If there's anything else that, that, that the world is going to throw at us today. I, I understand because the apostle Paul was talking to the church in Galatia. And he was talking about all the good things they've been doing, how well they've been doing, all the good they've been doing. Do you know that you can do good in the kingdom of God and still be tired as a result of doing good things? Pouring into your marriage, pouring into your kids, serving in the church, giving, you know, doing good can also be tiring. So I wanna give you four warnings. Here's some things that happen when we get tired. Number one, we quit praying. Matthew chapter 26 the night of the Passover, the night that Jesus was betrayed, he called a prayer meeting with the disciples. But he returned to the disciples and he found them asleep. He said to Peter, bro, you couldn't watch with me for one hour? Keep watching, pray, so that you will not give in to what, church? Temptation. Because the spirit is willing, but it's the body that's weak. See, when we are tired, we often stop praying first. It's the first thing to go. And we allow our physical weakness to become a spiritual weakness. And what Jesus is saying is your heart has got to be bigger than your flesh because our insides have got to learn to become stronger than our outside because our flesh hates to pray. I don't know about you, but generally speaking, the flesh does not like to pray. The flesh does not need a reason not to pray. We need a reason to pray. So what what Paul is saying is you can't give up doing good in prayer, even when you're tired. So, so many times I talk to people, they're like, oh, 
I'm just so tired lately. Yeah, the disciples of Jesus have been using that excuse for 2,000 years. And Jesus didn't buy it 2,000 years ago. Here's the funny thing. Our bodies will resist prayer even when we're on our best. Like when everything is amazing and everything is coming up cupcakes and rainbows, we're still like, oh, I'm tired. I don't know if I can make it to prayer Wednesday night. But here's the problem. When we're tired, we allow our prayer life to be evaporated, which then we lose our strength on the inside, which then we do things on the outside that are weak. So you can't allow your prayer life to be discarded. Your prayer life is how the earth that you live in interacts with heaven. So it's so important that you pay attention to that. Think about it this way. The disciples asked Jesus, hey, boss, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, I will teach you how to pray. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Lord, let your kingdom and your will come and be done, where? On earth as it is in heaven. So how we pray opens up opportunities on the earth that heaven wants to be released through. When we don't pray, we're closing doors of opportunity for God to move. So prayer is how we do our best on our worst day. It's how heaven is opened up when we pray. So don't get weary in doing good and don't let your prayer life suffer just because you're tired. You have to continue to strengthen yourself. We talked two weeks ago about praying in other tongues. Praying in the Holy Spirit is like strengthening your inner man. It's like doing push-ups, exercises in your heart. When we stop praying, we get weaker and we do dumb. Number two, what happens when we get tired? We quit watching. We, we quit guarding. We, we become open to attack. I pulled that out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He said, be on guard. Do not sleep like the others. Stay alert. Stay clear-headed. Keep alert. Keep focused. Keep watch. Keep guard. You are the night watchman. You're the mall cop of your soul, of your heart, of your life. And don't get tired in the middle of the night because when we get tired, we get tempted. And we fall asleep on the job. And we don't see that the enemy is attacking through temptation. And you might say, how, how is the enemy attacking? What is he protecting us from? Protecting us from ourselves to do dumb. See, dumb is easy. Holiness and fighting the battle to the end is hard. Dumb is stuff that we don't have to study up for. Dumb, you don't have to read a book and listen to a podcast to get seven steps on how to do dumb. We can do dumb quick when we're tired and we're not on watch. We say things we shouldn't say. We do things we shouldn't do. We look at things on screens we shouldn't look at. We think things we shouldn't think. Dumb is easy when you're tired. I've seen marriages thrown away because people get tired of putting in the work for a happy, healthy, godly marriage. I've seen people get tired of doing good and they throw away sobriety. They'll throw away their peace. They'll throw away their finances. They'll throw away their virginity we talked about because we get tired of doing the good things. So we have to be very careful to stay on guard, to not fall asleep, to keep a watch over the, our heart, over our soul over our lives. So things that happen when we get tired, we quit praying, we stop watching, we give in to temptation. And then Galatians chapter six and verse 10, this is the very next verse after our opening verse where he said, don't grow weary in doing good. Verse 10, therefore, whenever you have the opportunity, do good to everyone. Listen to this though, especially those in the family of faith. Isn't that interesting? Here's number three. What happens when we get tired? We quit caring because when we're tired, we only care about ourselves. And when we're tired, we're just like, I just don't care. And I'm too tired to care. You've been in a store or a restaurant and you've had a little customer service problem. So you're like, hey, can I speak to the manager? And you get some like assistant manager who's you know, like a senior in high school who's like not really there because they have a passion for the company or the career. And you're like, hey, I'm having a problem here with you know, this situation. I have to return this or there was a problem with that. And they look at you and they're like, bro, I just don't care. And they don't pay me enough to care. Like, you know, and that's why Chick-fil-A revolutionized the fast food industry because they brainwashed all of their staff, whether they're faking it or not, to care. So you're just like, huh, of course I'll go back for fried chicken and get fatter and diabetes because I'm so happy that people care about my needs and my waffle fries and that amazing Chick-fil-A sauce which is nothing but sugar and angel's tears, you know, that you're, you're covering your fried food and that's why it tastes so good. But why you keep going back is because they care or pretend to care. 
But so many places today, and unfortunately, even in the body of Christ, we're like, hey, bro, it's been 2020. I cared back in March. I cared in June. It's November going into December. I just don't care anymore, and I'm too tired to care. Paul is reminding us, listen, we have to continue to do good even when we're tired, but look at what the point he made, especially to other Christians. That's interesting to me. That kind of stands out to me. Why would he make this whole thing about, hey, don't grow weary, don't get tired, but especially keep serving in the family of faith? Why? Because when you're in the family of faith serving, we can serve one another. We can lift each other up. We can fight for each other. We can protect each other. We can encourage each other. We can lift a burden off of you when you're tired. We can bless you so that you can be a blessing. But here's the problem, and I've seen it time and time again. Too often when we're tired, oh, I just can't, I couldn't make it to church. You know, the 11 o'clock service is so early, I couldn't get out of bed for 11 o'clock service. I was just too tired. I have work and school and life in 2020. I just couldn't get to you group. Oh, on, on, on planning center, I just had to block out so I wouldn't serve on the dream team because I was just so tired. And Paul's saying, listen, when you're tired, you don't run from the family of faith. You lean into the family of faith so that we can help you. We can strengthen you. We can be refreshed inside the family of faith. When we're tired, we stop praying. We stop watching. We stop caring. And number four, we stop being faithful. Let's talk about faith. You can define faith a million different ways, but here's a simple elementary explanation of faith. Can I trust God? Can I trust God with my heart? Can I trust God with my life? Can I trust God with my marriage, with my children or grandchildren? Can I trust God with my body, with my health? Can I trust God with my finances? Do I trust God? That's faith. And faith is when we can finally say, Yes, I trust God. But faithfulness is when God says, I can trust you. Amen. We have faith in God, but what God is looking for is faithfulness from us. He's saying, yes, I can trust you to share the gospel. I can trust you to be a light in the darkness. I can trust you to shine my light and my power in a lost and hurting and dark generation. I can trust you to love people the way I love people. So we're asking the same question that God's asking of us. Can I trust you? And he's saying, can you be faithful to me even if you don't feel like it, even if you're tired? Second Timothy chapter two, this is an interesting verse because the apostle Paul was in prison. He was at the end of his ministry. He was tired. And the way he wrote to his son in the faith, a disciple, Timothy, he said, endure suffering along with me. Why? Because you're a good soldier of Christ Jesus. The apostle Paul was saying to Timothy, you're a good soldier, so you're in this thing, so we're gonna endure this thing even if we're tired because soldiers don't get to call in sick and say, I'm just tired. I'm not battle ready because I'm tired. No, soldiers have a higher mission, a greater calling. And there's things in their life that matter more than their own life. So the men and women that have served our nation, they're like, no, protecting the liberties and freedoms of this nation is more important than my own life. So training, and studying and preparing for battle, even if it never comes, it's what we do. So as Christians, that translates. Even when we're tired, we're faithful to God. It's what we do. Even if I'm tired, I'm not gonna go get drunk, I'm not gonna get high, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna cheat, I'm not gonna steal, I'm not gonna sleep with somebody I'm not married to. Why? Because I'm gonna remain faithful to God. It's what we do, yeah. even when we're tired. I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna go to church, I'm gonna worship, I'm gonna be on time, I'm gonna serve on a dream team because saved people serve people. I'm not gonna look at porn, I'm not gonna cheat on my taxes, I'm not gonna flip somebody off on 183. I'm gonna do everything in my power to remain faithful to God. Yeah. I've settled it in my heart, it's a done deal. I will remain faithful to God no matter what or I'll die trying. Amen. So God is asking, can you have a commitment in your life that's bigger than your feelings? Because oftentimes when we say, oh, I'm, I'm tired. If you've had six hours of sleep, like medically, biologically, that's enough. But I talk to people that have had six hours of sleep and they're like, oh, I'm just oh, so tired. Yeah, that's a feeling, not a reality. So do you have a cause in your life that's bigger than your feelings? And I'm telling you right now, the kingdom of God is a cause greater than our emotions. It's a cause greater than our feelings. The kingdom of God is a cause literally worth dying for. 
it's certainly a cause worth being tired for once in a while. And I'll be honest, and this is gonna sound super spiritual, and I know I do this for a living, but the longer I work in the ministry and I preach and I love people and I encourage people and I pray for people, it, I don't get tired. I get pumped. I get excited. When people get born again, even though it's work, I'm excited. When people get baptized in water, I'm excited. When people join you groups, and they're, they're, I'm excited. I get pumped because I've, I've surrendered myself to be faithful to a cause that's bigger than me. The bottom line, what the Apostle Paul is trying to say to our church, it's okay to be tired. Just don't get tired of doing good. Let me read that verse to you one more time that we open with Galatians chapter six and verse nine. Let's not get tired of doing what is good. Why? Because at just the right time, you will reap a harvest of God's blessing. How? If you don't give up. See, so many times we see other Christians, we see Christian leaders, pastors, evangelists, other people in your life, you know, just regular old folks, and they, they, they give up on some area. They give up on their sobriety. They give up on their holiness. They give up on their faith. They give up on their marriage. And you're like, how did they give up? Why did they do that? They were tired. They, they gave up because they were tired. So let me give you two quick things on how to protect yourself from getting tired. And I know this is gonna sound bananas, but when you're tired, you should rest. Come on. Right? Yeah. They didn't teach me that in Bible college. <laughs> when you're tired, you should rest. See, God created the world in six days, and then he rested on the seventh day. God created in the law for the Jewish people. You can work for six days, but you must rest on the seventh day. We were not created to work seven days. We were created to work six days and rest on the seventh. And too often, we're exhausted, we're tired because we're too dumb to stop and rest. You have to stop, you have to Sabbath, you have to rest. Take that day. You don't pick up an extra shift. You don't start a big yard project with the whole family just because it's a day off. No, you unplug. You recharge. Think of a, you ever grab a, a cordless tool, a cordless drill. You ever grab your phone, you forgot to charge it, and it's dead. A cordless drill with no charge, a phone with no charge in your hand is worthless. So too much of the church in the hands of the Lord is worthless because we're never allowing ourselves to be refreshed and recharged and rested in his presence. We have to rest. We have to say no. No, I'm sorry, we can't make it to that thing. Our family's gonna take a day of rest. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't join that one more Bible study. I'm sorry, I can't go do that thing. I'm gonna take that day and rest. And that's not once a year, that's every week. You take that day to rest. Oh no, I know, but I can keep going. Yeah, but you can't keep going if, you de if you're killing the charge on your soul battery. And then you become worthless. Second thing you can do to recharge and refresh and rest, pray in the spirit. We read two weeks ago that when we pray in the spirit, we're strengthening our inner man. You know what's crazy? This is, I'm gonna blow your mind today twice. If you never exercise physically, you will be physically weak. Seriously. I sh Can you believe that? If you never exercise spiritually, you will be spiritually weak. So I'm not a big runner. I can work out, but I can't do like a whole lot of cardio. I'm just a big sissy. I don't do cardio well. But when I'm in the gym and I see people, you know, jump on the treadmill or whatever, and they just hit the go button. Like there's not a routine, they just go. They'll put in their AirPods and put on a playlist or watch something on their phone. And I'll look over 45 minutes later and they're still, whoo, whoo. they're not really even sweating. I'm like, how are you doing that? That's amazing. It's because they've done that every day, every other day for weeks, months years, they've trained their body, they've trained their muscles, they've trained their lungs, they've trained their heart to be strong. 
Spiritually, most Christians are weak because we haven't trained our spirit man to be strong and we haven't rested our soul to recharge. So don't grow weary in doing good, but you also have to rest, recharge, and exercise spiritually to remain strong. Did that help you this morning? Yes. Hop up on your feet, I wanna pray for you. I said something 15 minutes ago that kind of went by and I want to circle back around. I feel like the Lord wants me to circle back to it. I said that thing about marriage, that the longer Josie and I pastor, we we hear people, we talk to people, we hear their stories where they are just tired, tired of being married because they've turned the, the sweet love and intimacy of a young marriage after years into a friendship, into a roommate situation. And they're just tired of this person in my life still. This year, Josie and I are coming up on 25 years of being married, and I don't, okay. It is pretty amazing to be married to me, yeah. It's a gift, you're welcome. Watch it for lightning. But we're sometimes amazed, because it's actually not that hard. Like, we'll talk to some married couples, and they're like, yeah, isn't it great, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years? And we'll talk to other couples, and they're like, oh, 25, whew, that's a bad, that's a chore. That must be hard. Like, no, it's really not that hard. We're just desperately in love with Jesus and desperately in love with one another. And we put in the work that it takes to protect our heart, to protect our marriage from becoming roommates and becoming tired of doing the work. So wherever you are in your heart, in your life, in your marriage, don't let the devil turn your marriage into a friendship roommate situation because we get tired of putting in the work. And remember what happens when we get tired, we do dumb. So let me speak to the people that have done dumb. Maybe you cheated on your spouse. Maybe you said something you never should have said. This could have been years ago. The problem is you're like, well, I guess I forgave you and we'll just stay married. But you begin to bury that thing under layers, years of friendship, roommates. Who do you think wants to destroy your marriage? God or the devil? See what I'm saying? We're partnering with the devil when we don't put in the work in our marriages. So today, you might need to go back and peel back some of the layers that you've allowed to rest underneath all those years of friendship and roommates and repent, ask God to forgive you, ask your spouse to forgive you. Your spouse might need to forgive, you might need to forgive your spouse. You might need to take two or three days over this holiday season, the next few weeks, and just get away. No kids, no grandkids, just the two of you, just to love on each other, just to put in the work into your marriage, into your relationship, so that you're not tired of being married. That was extra, that wasn't in my notes. I just wanted to share my heart on marriage. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you would help us when we get tired. I pray, we don't know what December 2020 holds, but I I just declare that it's gonna be a month of blessing, of health, of prosperity, of strength, of joy, of peace, of hope. Why? Because we are your sons and daughters, because you have forgiven us of our sins. You have made us holy, that you have been faithful to us when we were not faithful to you, that you would recharge us, refresh us, renew us, strengthen us. Lord, have your way in our church. I'm so proud of our church, Father. I think they're doing amazing. I think they've handled this year really well. Our giving is up. People are serving in, in, in kids' church and serving in tech teams and serving in welcome teams. I'm so proud of our church and the way we've responded to a tiring year. Bless them, Lord. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let me talk to your heart for a minute. If you're here this morning or you're watching online and you'd be honest and say, man, I don't, I don't know that I'm in right standing with God. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know that I really believe in my heart or I've allowed sin into my life that separated me from God. I wanna pray for you today. In fact, I think today is your day to repent of sin and surrender your life to the Lord. It might be the first time in your life. It might be the first time in a long time, but today is your day to get right with God. And you that are watching online right now at home, you were like, man, I hope he wouldn't look at the camera. No, I'm literally looking right at you. It's just between you and God, but man, I encourage you to surrender your life to the Lord. Repent of sin. 
declare that Jesus is the Lord of your life today. That's where our strength comes from. That's what renews our soul. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you're like, preacher, pray for me. Man, I've got to get right with God today. I've, my heart's beating out of my chest. I need to pray and make Jesus the Lord of my life. This might be the first time in your life you ever prayed a prayer like this. This might be the first time in a long time because you've allowed your heart to get tired. You've allowed your heart to grow cold. You've allowed sin back into your life and you're saying things and doing things that are dumb. Today's your day to do smart. Today's your day to repent. Today's your day to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If that's you and you want me to pray and lead you in that prayer, I, I need to know who I'm praying for. First time or first time in a long time, would you just shoot your hand up real high and just say, preacher, pray for me. Today's my day. I see your hand and I see your hand and I see your hand. Anybody else? Just shoot your hand up real high. I see your hand. Anybody else? Come on, somebody. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, you that are watching online, I saw four people raise their hand and say, man, I'm gonna get right with God today. What about you? Right there in your living room, right there in your bedroom or your kitchen or wherever you're watching this video, just between you and God, shoot your hand up in the air and say, I've gotta get right with God today. Hey, if you believe it in your heart, why don't you pray this prayer out loud with me? All of us, let's pray it together. Say, dear Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. I repent. I surrender my life to you. I'm tired of running from you. Today I run to you. Wash me and cleanse me. Purify my heart. Renew my mind. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I receive the gift of eternal life. I believe that you are the savior of the world, the savior of my soul. In Jesus' name. We say church, amen? amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. So proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Golly. What I'd like to do is I bring our prayer team down to the front. And if you need prayer, these men and women want to pray for you. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer and you really meant it, man, I want you to text the name, text the word Jesus to 817 817- 405-2244. You're going to get an auto response form to fill out. Please fill that form out, submit it, because I want one of our pastors to begin to pray for you and encourage you in your walk of faith. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can do the same thing. You can text Jesus to that phone number, or you can reach into the seat back in front of you and grab our connect card. It's that long, skinny black card. You can fill that out and drop it in the offering bucket when we leave. The offering buckets are going to be held by the ushers on their way out this morning. Um, and that's If you have a prayer request, put it on a connect card. You have a praise report, put it on a connect card. You want to get connected with our church, put it on the connect card and drop it in the bucket on your way out this morning.